electric cars are a mystery to most of us. How long do their batteries really last? What happens when the cars get old? What happens to their performance levels? Do they really need servicing? Are they damaged by rapid charging? And do they become junk after just a few years? I think it's about time we got some answers. So I went out and found one. This is one of the highest mileage cars in the country, and it's electric. This Tesla Model S, owned from new by cab driver Paul Curzon of Eco Executive Travel, has clocked up a whopping 430,000 miles. It would take a jumbo jet 31 days to clock that up at cruising speed. It's nearly traveled to the moon and back, and we're gonna live with it. But what exactly do we have planned? We're gonna do a range test, a health check, performance test. We're gonna find out exactly what makes this car tick. Original battery, original motors. So this has had a couple of repairs. We've got ourselves a set of cones and a stopwatch. Literally nothing's happening. I get the feeling it's not gonna charge. But before that, first things first, time to go and collect the keys from the car's home location in Chesterfield from its owner, Tesla enthusiast and taxi driver, Paul Curzon. Hello, Paul. Hello, how are you? I'm Good very you. good, mate. Good to see you. So you got two Model S's. Which one of these is the high miler? This is a high miler, 430,000 miles, and that one's close behind at 375,000. So what's the story behind them? Why have you actually got two cars with such high mileage? So back in 2016, I came up with the idea of wanting to do airport taxi service okay. um, with an environmental twist, and I discovered Tesla. So I see you are clearly taking a bit of a leap of faith because how old are these cars? So this is a 66 plate and that's a 16 plate. So yeah, there was, uh, I believe there's about 300 Teslas in the country at the time uh, and six major charging points. Okay, so let's focus on the really high mileage car. What exactly is it? It's a P60, P85? Uh, no, so it's a 90D. Okay, um, so 90 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, dual motor, okay. um, 0 to 60, 4.2 seconds, I believe. And it's still running, because one of the things that people who are skeptical about EVs always go on about is that the batteries only last a couple of years. No, uh, battery, original battery with degradation of, uh, as of today, probably lost about 65 miles range in total. Um, and original motors. Because there are a few other high mileage Teslas out there that claim to have like a million miles on the clock or a million kilometers. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but those ones uh, have been kind of uh, re repaired yeah, along the path. There's one guy that's, I think you believe he's had something like 28 new, uh, new motors and sort of six or seven new batteries. So these are all original, both cars. What's the warranty situation? Uh, just come to the end of its eight year warranty. Uh, this comes up in September. So with supercharging, because you were such an early adopter, how much supercharging do you get with this car? So I get free supercharging on both vehicles for the lifetime of the car to the chassis number. Okay, can I have a look at the charge port actually? Yes. Because um, obviously the Tesla Model Y that I've got, it's different to these. Yeah, so this is the, um, this is the original um, Type 2. Okay. So this is the home charger, the seven kilowatt. Yeah. Um, and the version two um, charger comes with this cable. However, if you move on to a version three or version four superchargers, you have to have the, uh, the interface to get it to go to type two. How much has um, supercharging, free supercharging been worth to you over the years? Because you're running a taxi firm basically yeah. on Tesla's money. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would estimate between seven to 10,000 pounds a year per car. That's insane. I think uh, this one this year has done 27,000 kilowatts, I think it is. Wow. For just this car. Like. All for free. Doesn't that feel good, not paying for petrol yeah, or diesel? It's, uh, it's a nice a nice feeling, especially when you're, when you're surrounded by other vehicles that you know are paying. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> One thing I've known or heard yeah. is that rapid charging a car will damage the battery. How do you charge it? So today, for example, um, I started this morning at half past one in the morning. I've already supercharged three times today. So this car has actually been charged to 100% every day, multiple times. So the entire line about supercharging damages your car? I think, so. I think it's, uh, it's probably something put in place to try and protect the cars, but it's, uh, it's over protection as far as I'm concerned. I see, yeah. really good. Do you do any slow charging as well? Yeah, I, I always DC charge in the daytime, and then on an evening, we, I come back with a, a high percentage charge and then top up using the chargers on the house, and uh, I think I'm running at sort of 55 to 60% supercharging. And what types of journeys do you do in the car typically? So we're here in Chesterfield. Our bread and butter is across to Manchester, so across the Pennines, yeah. um, which is A roads, B roads. 
uh, and then like today for example I've done a Heathrow so a lot of motorway, uh, East Midlands motorway, so it's a good mixture of both really. Should we have a little look around the car then just to see what exactly um, happens to a Tesla over the course of eight years, yes. the front end, you've got some stone chips on Stone there. chips but um, this like I say the majority of our mileage is, uh, is motorway mileage so 70 miles an hour. Uh, stone chips um, right up the back of a BMW on the yeah bumper. yeah generally <laughs> <laughs> or HUV yeah. so yeah generally stone chips the the paint work is something that people criticized with Tesla yeah um, particularly in the beginning what, what's that been like um, to be honest it's not not been too bad um, it has had a couple of resprays um, but you, like I say it's on the, the edge of doors and surfaces things like the corner doors um, yeah. bumper obviously um, it's not the greatest but I would say it's probably still up to the test of time I love the number plates, but, but yeah, this one's seen better days. Yeah, this one's uh, just got a little bit torn. We had a replacement, but it's not quite arrived on time, but um, it's just through the pressure washing. You get a little nick. When you've had a car for eight years, you, you're bound to have had a couple of kind of mishaps and, yes. and, and, and scrapes. Has anything gone wrong? I had a, I had a very early incident with, uh, with autopilot, which um, I kind of did the first probably 25,000 miles in the car and I championed it. I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately we had an incident with cones, which uh, this is the Autopilot 1, so it's radar based. Yep. And cones are circular or curved with reflective surfaces. It doesn't uh, like that. And it doesn't like it at all. Right. Um, so it literally turned into, uh, snatched the wheel out of my hands, turned left into a load of cones and uh, we had cones of plenty all over the place. <laughs> um, did about seven and a half thousand pounds worth of damage. Oh wow! I've just noticed up here as well. You've got a little uh, aerodynamic modification. Uh, um, uh, is that what it is? Yeah. So, uh, so it's a weight saver as well. It's saved about two ounces. Um, but yeah, effectively the the windscreen wiper mechanism sheared off inside, which raised the windscreen wiper. So as it comes back down, it catches the uh, the lip of the bonnet. Uh, so the, car, the car's destroying itself. It's just eating itself, yes. Yeah. It's just worn itself away when it rains. Uh, I'll tell you another one that's a great one as well. Yeah. These bloody things. So this section is always fine. Yeah. But this section is supposed to be lit all the way across the top. Oh, now. yeah. Bearing in mind it's LED, so it's supposed to be long wearing. Yeah. Um, it's on both cars and it's never actually been addressed other than they've decreased the price that you have to pay for a new headlight. I'm, I, you know, I'm actually quite impressed with it. It's a, an eight-year-old car driven like, like you wouldn't believe every single day. Because yeah. you get all the people on X, Twitter saying yeah. so many negative things um, about them. And the yet... great thing is because it's got no combustion engine, you don't lose any horses. So when you press the accelerator, it's still the same speed, not to 60 as it was on day one. Impressive. What about charging though? Does it lose any charging speed? It does, but. I think what it is now is the chargers are moving along at such a great rate, we're just coming up to 350 kilowatt chargers. Yeah. The architecture on this car will only allow it to charge to 150. Yeah, it's a um, 400 watt architecture, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's kind of, it, it doesn't really matter to me, to be honest. And okay. uh, like I say, degradation of range isn't such an issue now because the, the, the network has actually expanded so much. Here's a question for you though. When you've picked up one of your clients to drive them to the airport or whatever, yeah. do you ever find yourself stranded at the airport because you can't find a charger, or what's, what, no, what, what's daily life like well, with I mean, an electric car as a taxi? Again, it's all planning, it's in the planning, devil's in the detail, but uh, there are superchargers near all major airports. Yeah. Um, I think the only bugbear at the moment is a lot of people that have had superchargers installed have now started charging parking fees yes. to sit there to charge a car, which I think is, it doesn't encourage people to go EV. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any regrets? Would you, would you, would you, is there a part of you that thinks, I wish I'd gone diesel or petrol. No, it just makes so much sense, predominantly because of the free supercharging, but even servicing. I mean, this car has never actually physically had a service. Okay. It's still on the original fluid, it's still the, the original. It's uh, never had a service? No. <laughs> it has to get, it has to be MOT'd because it's, it's licensed by the local authority. So it has to be MOT'd every six months. Right. And anything that looks like it's wearing out or about to go, you replace, replace it. it. Yeah, yeah. So it's preventative maintenance of that form, but. There's no need to go there and like no. uh, change the oil and. But I mean, if you think about, if this was a Mercedes E-Class, for example, if you think about every 15,000 miles, if it was a diesel, yeah. you'd need some form of a service and your basic service is probably 500 pounds. Yeah. That blows, no it absolutely blows my mind. Yeah. Um, tires though, surely. Tires, yeah, so I learned very early on that this is on air. Yeah. Uh, and as soon as you get to 70 miles an hour on the motorway, it's set to drop to kind of low profile. Yeah. 
which puts a negative camber on all four wheels. Okay. So my first set of tyres, I think I got between five to 10,000 miles out of. Yeah. And on the outside, they look fantastic, but when you put your hand on the inside, you got wire on what, all four. What are these like? <laughs> so these are, I've just moved to Hankook, um, and they are really hard wearing. So yeah. these are now about a month old, but okay. um, wearing really nice and even. I always say you can tell a lot about a person by the, the state of their rear tires. So I'm gonna have a quick look. Yeah, <laughs> as good as the front. Okay, all right, yeah. all right. You're not, not too much of a hooligan. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, like I say, these days it's more about range than it is about uh, 0-60. For sure. Yeah. And in terms of build quality on these older cars, so Tesla often get criticized for the shut lines not being even and things like that. But yeah. is there anything when you look at it, you think, oh, that's annoying me. And, and a, a, a big traditional car company would have done that better. Yeah, um, general Tesla rattles. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's brought on by the fact that it's such a quiet car. The electric cars don't have the, the whole yeah. of an engine, so therefore you hear a lot more. So can we take a look at the interior quickly? Yes, actually? yes, because um, that's always a, a bit of a giveaway when it comes mm -hmm. to the car's age. So the actual seats themselves we've held up. This is the generation three, I think they were. Yeah. Uh, the newer seat design, and apart from a little bit of wear and tear, it's actually not bad. It's actually really good when you consider the amount of times that I've sat in that car. Okay. Well, the idea behind this series for me was to come and meet you meet your car, but I actually want to take this away with me to find out what it's really like to live with a high mileage electric car, to see if it's a ticking time bomb yeah. or whether people should just kind of relax a little bit and, and embrace the fact that EVs actually last longer than they think. I think so. Would yeah. you entrust your baby with me? I'm not sure they will. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff with it. We're going to test it. We're going to figure out what's right, what's wrong. Yep. Um, and. I, I promise not to break it. That's fine. <laughs> All right. I only trust you with the keys. All right, amazing. <laughs> All right, so make sure you tune in. This series is going to run over the course of a few weeks. We're going to do a range test, a battery test, a health check, performance test. We're going to find out exactly what makes this car tick, get under the skin, and figure out whether a high mileage or used EV is worth buying. So stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. I'm just going to drive like a normal human being to give us the real deal range in this old school high mileage Tesla. I'm actually flooring it and it's not going much faster than 25 miles an hour. Literally nothing's happening. I get the feeling it's not going to charge. Oh God. Oh God. 